Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, oh, oh. 
Man, I'm excited to be in service once again. Man, God is so wonderful, isn't he? Amen. If you know that God is wonderful, come on, give him a hand clap. Come on, come on, let's give him a hand clap. Give the Lord some praise right now. Give him some praise right now because I know he has been doing some marvelous things in your life. And I just thank him for keeping us and our clothes in our right mind, giving us inner peace. Amen. Giving us inner peace. And that come from nobody but the Lord. And so he is so gracious he is so gracious and i'm glad about it. i'm glad that you join us this uh sunday morning for this worship experience and uh, god is going to be real in your life he's going to be real it's some things that god wants to do to you it's some things that god wants to say to you okay he has a new assignment for some of you and some of you have to be uh, willing to accept your new assignment okay let's pray for it. father in the name of jesus we thank you we bless you we magnify who you are You've been so sweet in our soul. You've been so kind in our mind. And you understand our circumstance. So God, we ask you to undergird us and, and make us comfortable during these trying times. We know you can. You, we know you love us. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him, in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we believe in that son, and we will not perish, and we will accept everlasting life. So we're asking you to let you allow your word to go and penetrate our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Let's go to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. We're getting started. Hebrews, uh, the fourth chapter. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. It's a little hot in here. You all have to excuse me. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. And we're going to look at the 16th verse. We're going to revisit this. Okay? We're going to revisit this. Okay? Look what it says. Come on with me. Okay? Hebrew 4 and 16. You got it? I'll wait for you. You got it? All right. Thank you. Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace. That's some stunning words. Let me say it again. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need and find grace to help in the time of need. All right. I'm going to just use for a, a base topic or a base subject or I'm just using uh, something that we can cleanse on, clean on. I'm sorry, clean on, okay? Um, bend, but not break. That's what we're going to talk about. Bend, but not break, okay? Bend, but not break. That's what we're going to talk about. The writer, stay with me, the writer uh, continues his argument, urgent discussion of rest in chapter 3. God's words has come uh, to this generation, my brothers and sisters, as Moses is dealing with some real entanglement with a similar problem and promise of rest. Here in the text, the promise of God, I feel God, the promise of God, my brothers and sisters, are useless if we don't take heed to his word. If we don't respond to his sovereign grace, the word of God is useless because God promised us if we have faith in him, He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think, mm. according to the power that rests in us. So everything that we deal with uh, concerning God, regarding, regarding God, is by faith. Okay? Faith, faith is the foundation. Uh, that God uses so that we can reach him. Uh, listen to me. The Bible talks about now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Let me say it again. Because faith is the foundation. 
okay? In which we stand on, my brothers and sisters, to rock heaven, to, to wake up heaven, faith is. And that's why the Bible says in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of, ooh, y'all not with me. Y'all not with me. That's, that's, that's faith. The Bible says, the Bible says, the just should live by their faith. Mm -hmm. If we're going to live the way God desires for us to live, we gonna we must live by faith. It is incompetent of us to embrace faith and begin to stand on that foundation of faith. Are you with me? I'm going somewhere. Don't 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 don't, don't leave me. The Bible says also when we talk about faith. See, see, the Bible talks so much about faith to the point that on the inside we should have so much faith in God that we can ask for anything. Is what you say if we believe it. Ask for anything. Because the word of God says uh, we walk by faith. And not by sight. I'm getting excited. We walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, the just should live by faith. For the faith, for faith is the substance of, oh, good God Almighty. Faith is the substance. It's the substance. That, that's what it's talking about. That, that's that kind of faith. And, and I, I like the way, I like the way Paul used it in the 11th uh, chapter of, 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 of Hebrews. He said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And then he went on to say, uh, for by it the elders obtain a good report. They obtain a good report. And so faith is really important to where we're going. But look at here, look at here, look at here. In the text, the warning utters lack of faith equals death. The lack of faith equals death death because 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 if you can't you don't have faith you can't approach God if you don't have faith you can't walk with God if you don't have faith my brothers and sisters you can't lean on God if you can't if you don't have faith you can't depend on God hello somebody if you if you don't have faith my brothers and sisters God don't even pay you attention so it's based on our faith remember Jesus remember Jesus is our high priest we have uh, um, the type of right now access to God at all times. We can reach God at all times so we can move toward our purpose. But if you have not uh, embraced faith, living faith, is no way that you can operate in the purpose that God has birthed in you without faith. Hello, somebody. Because faith is what carries us into the presence of God. Are you with me? It, it totally carries us into the presence of God because the Bible says it this way. Uh, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. Look what it said. For, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, somebody hit your bishop and say, diligently seek him. Come on, I'm waiting on you. Say, diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. You got to diligently seek God. And the only way you can diligently seek God is by faith. By faith. I like the way, I like the way uh, Paul wrote in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, and the 14th verse concerning Jesus Christ, he said it this way. He said it this way. Seeing then that we have a great high priest mm -hmm, uh, that is passed into the heavens. Come on, talk to me, Paul. I'm going to talk to you, Bishop. Jesus, the Son of God. Uh, <laughs> let us hold fast our profession. Jesus, the Son of God. He said, let us hold fast our profession. Okay, what we have, what we have professed, 
We got to hold, we got to hold on to our faith. We got to hold on to trusting God. We must hold on to depending on God. We must hold on to leaning on God. We must hold on to acknowledging God. We, we must hold on uh, to walking with God. We must hold on to talking with God. We have to hold on to that because that's all we got is our faith. So here, there are three things we need to equalize concerning faith. Three things we need to equalize concerning our faith. Stay with me. Number one, my brothers and sisters, how to obtain genuine mercy. How to obtain genuine mercy. In the text, we're going to stay with the text, all right? In the text, y'all look with me. In the text, it says, come boldly into the throne of grace. That's what it says. Come boldly. Come strong, okay? Come powerful. Come with authority, to the throne of grace. That's what he's talking about. In other words, what you mean by what you mean by genuine mercy? What you mean by mercy? What is mercy? Help me out. What is mercy? Well, on a biblical level and a theological level, y'all catch this. Mercy equals forgiveness. Okay? Mercy equals forgiveness. Are you with me here? Because when we have uh, uh, dishonored God and, and we haven't uh, kept his standards or, or we haven't walked it, uh, in his way, okay, we have sinned. Okay, and since we are creatures of habit, and that habit is sin, we need brand new mercy every day. Are you with me here? And so, when when the book says, when the Bible says genuine mercy, he is talking about genuine, genuine forgiveness. So, mercy equals forgiveness. Okay, and then also mercy equals sympathy. Okay, it equals sympathy. We want God to be sympathetic with us, all right? Because we are fallen beings, because my brothers and sisters, we, we are creatures uh, that are sinful. There, there are none good, no, not one, said Christ, okay? And so when we come before God and when we try, my brothers and sisters, to obtain genuine mercy, we need sympathy. We need, we need the sympathy of God, okay? We want God to be sympathetic toward us. And that's what mercy equals. Come talk to me, Bishop. What else mercy equals? Well, well, mercy equals tolerance, okay? You know, God, oh, good God Almighty, God cannot tolerate sin. Do I have what? It don't matter who it is. God cannot tolerate sin. That's the reason why uh, he killed his son on the cross. And that's the reason why Jesus said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? Because God cannot stand sin. Are you with me here? And because of the blood of Jesus. Oh, I feel it. I feel it. Because of the blood of Jesus, uh, God can tolerate us. Because he don't look at our sin when he look at us. He look at the blood of Jesus that's been applied to your soul. That's been applied to your soul spirit. That's what he looked at. And once he looked at you, and once he looked at me, he can be tolerant huh, in the way he deals with us. Why? Because he's not looking at this sinful man. I'm, I'm a sinful man. He's not looking at me. He's looking at the blood of Jesus that's been applied to us. Do I have a witness? Somebody say there is tolerance in the blood. Come on. Hit the bishop and say there is tolerance in the blood. There is, I'm waiting on you. Hit me and say there is tolerance in the blood of Jesus. What else does mercy equal? Mercy equal kindness. Okay. Kindness costs you nothing. My grandmother used to tell us that kindness don't cost you a plug nickel. It doesn't cost you nothing. It costs you nothing to be kind to someone. But when you are out of order, when you are out of step, are you with me? When you are not in the in in the in the in the order in in the step, my brothers and sisters of doing things correctly, uh, there's no kindness coming your way, 
Are you with me here? But because of Jesus Christ, because of what he did on Calvary, God can show us kindness in the time of trouble. God can show us kindness in the time of distress. God can show us kindness, my brothers and sisters. Oh, good God Almighty. In the time of sorrow, God can show us kindness in the time of crisis. Why? Because mercy equals kindness. Are you with me here? Talk to me, Bishop. I'm going to talk to your church. What else does mercy equals? Well, I'm glad you asked. Mercy equals blessings. Oh, the book says how to obtain genuine mercy, not just mercy. I need to know how to obtain genuine mercy. Uh, and so mercy equals blessings. God can hold all his blessings from us. Some of us are blessed and we still in our mess. Come on. Oh, good God Almighty. Some of us are blessed and we are still in our mess. But it's because of the mercy of God. It's, but let me say it again, just in case you didn't get it. Because, because of the mercy of God, you getting away with it. Because of the mercy of God, you not being caught. Because of the mercy of God, the sheet hasn't been pulled off of you. Because of the mercy of God, look at here. Because of the mercy of God, you are blessed in your mess. Hello, somebody. Because we are full of mess. Because we are full of sin. Our hearts are not right with God. And so the only way our heart can get right with God at any time is when we embrace Jesus Christ. Blessings are not about us. Blessings are not about how kind we are. Blessings are not about how good we are. Blessings are not about how benevolent we are. The blessings of God is based on our relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what it is. Not based upon you just because you've been good. Okay? It's not based upon you because you've been benevolent. Hello, somebody. It's not based upon you because you've been kind. It's based upon your, your relationship with Jesus Christ. And your relationship with Jesus Christ, God can't do nothing but open the windows of heaven and rain you and shower you down blessings because you love Jesus. Somebody hit me and say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Come on, church. Hit me and say, I love Jesus. Because because you love Jesus, the blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich and it adds no sorrow. Because you love Jesus, I look over my shoulder, my right shoulder, I look over my left shoulder, and I see all the things that God don't desire. I see all the things that God does not like. Hello, somebody. I see all the things that God hates. Are, are you with me here? But let me tell you you something. Because I love Jesus, because I have embraced Christ as my personal Savior, because I have made him my Lord of Lord and King of King, the things over my shoulders, God has taken those things, each and every one, and has thrown those things in the sea of forgiveness that he may be able to bless me, that he may be able to bless you. You look over your right shoulder, sin. Look over your left shoulder, Sin, look behind you. Sin, look in front of you. Sin, none of us are right before God, but God is not looking at that. Look over your right shoulder. Blessings because of my relationship with Jesus Christ. Look over your left shoulder. Blessings because of my relationship with Jesus Christ. Look behind you. Blessings because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Look in front of you. Nothing but blessings because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. That's where our blessings come from. Do I have a witness? God blesses us because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Are you with me here? Not only that, not only that. Talk to me, Bishop. I'm going to talk to your church. Tell me a little bit more about that mercy. That mercy, that genuine mercy. Well, that genuine and mercy, my brothers and sisters, it equals favor. Uh, it equals favor favor. The Bible says, come boldly into the throne of grace. Hello, somebody. That you might, oh, 
Watch yourself that you might obtain what? <laughs> Come on, walk with me. Walk with me that you might obtain what? <laughs> yes, that's what he said. That you might obtain that you might obtain mercy. You're coming to the to the throne you, you, uh, of grace that you might obtain mercy. You're coming to the throne of grace that you might obtain mercy. Okay, now mercy has favor all on it. Now, look at your neighbor. Oh, you can't look at your neighbor, but look at the one next to you on your right hand and on, on the left hand. Look at the person behind you and tell them, I am favored by God because of my relationship with Jesus Christ. God has placed favor on my life. I'm not crazy. I know what the adversary is trying to do. The adversary is trying to take us out. Hello, somebody. The adversary is trying to destroy us. The adversary is trying to uncover us. Hello, somebody. The adversary is trying to make us miserable. Are you with me? The adversary is trying to bring grief in our heart. The adversary is trying to bring sorrow in your life. Are you with me here? The adversary is trying to build you up with anger. The adversary is trying to, to make you have suicidal thoughts that's the adversary but you have to understand because of Jesus Christ it's all about Jesus Christ because of Jesus Christ God has shown you favor and I thank God for the favor somebody hit the bishop come on chat with me hit the bishop and say I thank God for the favor that's on my life come on hit me and say I thank God for the favor that's on my life I'm getting ready to run in a minute because it's nothing but the favor of God why you are where you are. It's nothing but the favor of God that you have some nickels in the bank. It's nothing but the favor of God but the favor of God that you have a few investments. It's nothing but the favor of God that you have the job that you have. It's nothing but the favor of God that your children are all right. It's nothing but the favor of God that your grandchildren are all right. It's nothing but the favor of God, my brothers and sisters, that you have good health. It's nothing but the favor of God that that you have roof over your head. It's nothing but the favor of God, my brothers and sisters, that you have food to eat. It's nothing but the favor of God that you have clothes on your back. It's nothing but the favor of God that you have shoes on your feet. It's nothing but the favor of God that you have peace in your heart. It's nothing but the favor of God, my brothers and sisters, that you have gentleness all over you. It's nothing but the favor of God that compassions find you. It's nothing but the favor of God that you have love for the brethren is nothing but the favor of God. It's the favor of God. Are you with me here? And so that's what it's talking about. Because of the priesthood of Jesus Christ mm, at the point of contact every believer can fully expect and receive mercy. Receive mercy. Receive Benevolence. Note this, note this. Jesus Christ entered into the heavenly holies of holies, having accomplished redemption for all mankind. And so that's why the writer can write, let us therefore come boldly. Let us come with authority. Let us come with power to the throne of grace. Hello, somebody. To that throne. You don't have to wimp up there like you like you new on the block. Hello, somebody. You're a new kid on the block. No, no. You can come boldly. Why? Because God is my daddy. He's my father. Abba father. He's my father. He's my daddy. So I can come to my daddy and ask for what I want. Hello, somebody. Look at here. Uh, the loving mercy of God is all over us. The loving mercy of God. God, I want to thank you for your mercy. I like the way David said it in Psalm 23. Check got David in Psalm 23. David is one of my fellow, uh, my favorite uh, characters in the Bible. He's one of my favorite characters. He's one of my favorite persons in the Bible. I like the way he said it in Psalm 23. Look what he said. He said it this way. Surely, goodness and mercy should follow me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy should follow me all the days of my life. Forgiveness should follow me all the days of my life. Sympathy, God being sympathetic, should follow me all the days of my life. 
tolerance. God tolerating me. She'll follow me all the days of my life. Kindness. The kindness of the Lord shall follow me all the days of my life. Are you with me here? The blessings of God shall follow me all the days of my life. The favor that God has placed on each and every one of us shall follow us all the days of our life. And I believe that. And so that's why David was excited. Talk to me, David. Let me talk to you, Bishop. When he says, surely goodness and mercy should follow me all the days of my life because he's that kind of God. He don't look on me. He looks on his son. He look on his son who is pierced in his side. He looks on his son to see the nail print in his hand. He looks at his son who have nail print in his feet. And he says, surely goodness and mercy should follow you because of what Jesus has done all the days of your life. Not about me. Not only in the text it says, number one, how to obtain genuine mercy, but it always said, it says also, uh, number two, how to find authentic grace. How to find authentic grace. Come boldly into the throne. Come boldly unto the throne because of the superiority of Christ Jesus. Uh, at the point of contact, every believer can fully expect to find un woo, can fully find unmerited assistance from God. Are you with me here? In other words, God's grace is preeminent, my brothers and sisters, in every aspect of salvation. It's preeminent. His grace is preeminent in every aspect of salvation. Because we are saved, listen to me, listen. Because we are saved, because you are saved, God's grace is unapologetic. <laughs> I feel like preaching up in here. Is unapologetic. Talk to me, Bishop. I'm going to talk to you. Yes, the Bible says in Exodus 33 and 19. Look what it says, Exodus 33 and 19. For God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. Talk to me, God. I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will show and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. God, God is saying there, I'll be gracious to whosoever I want to be gracious to. And show mercy to whosoever I want to show mercy to. So I thank God that we're in that seat, that God is so gracious to us. Amen. Somebody hit me and say, God is gracious to me. Come on, come on, hit the bishop and say, God is gracious to me. God is so gracious to me because God has shown you grace and God has shown you mercy. Come on, are you with me here? Amen. Authentic grace, real grace. You know, grace comes in a time that we couldn't help ourselves. Listen here. Grace comes at a time that we couldn't help ourselves. Grace comes at a time we could not shelter ourselves. No, you wouldn't hear. Grace come at a time that we could not protect ourselves. Gra grace, grace come, or grace came at a time, my brothers and sisters, that we could not benefit ourselves. Are you with me here? Because of the hand of God. Oh, I feel it now. I feel it. Because of the hand of God is on your life. Hello, somebody. Let, let me say, let the bishop say it again. Let bishop, let bishop say this again. Because of the hand of God that is on your life, 
you are able to experience happiness because of the hand of God that is on your life you are able to experience inner peace come on talk to me God because of the hand of God that is on your life you are able my brothers and sisters to experience his multiple and multitude of blessings come on talk to me come on talk to me bishop because of the hand of god that is on your life you are able to receive the benefits of god let me go ahead on and preach here because of the hand of god that is on your life you are able to receive the promises of god because of the hand of god that is on your life you are able to receive the assurance of god can i keep preaching here huh? because of the hand of god that is on your life you are able to experience the laughter of god because of the hand of god that is on your life you are able to experience the joy of god because i heard the summit say the joy of the lord can I go here? Is my strength. Somebody hit the bishop right now and say, The joy of the Lord is my strength. Good God Almighty. I get power because I love God. I feel authority because I love God. I feel strong because I love God. I feel anointed because I love God. I and see the vision because I love God. I know what direction I'm going in because I love God. I feel protection over my life because I love God. God. Hello, somebody. I'm receiving every promise uh, because I love God. I can experience the covenant uh, that I made with the Lord because I love God. Do I have a witness here? Let me move on. Not only how to find authentic grace, but lastly, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says, number three, how to find help in the time of need. How to find help in the time of need. That's what I need to know. How can I find help in the time of need? Because of the qualifications of Jesus Christ. At the point of contact, God promised every believer he would send divine relief in the time of need. Because of the qualifications of Jesus Christ, at the point of contact, God promised every believer that he will send relief, divine relief, in the time of need. Note this, my brothers and sisters. God is excellent with sending relief mm, in the time of need. Let me say that again. God is excellent with sending relief in the time of need. He's that kind of God. He's excellent when, with, woo, good God Almighty, with sending relief in the time of shortage. He is excellent with sending relief in the time of lack, he is excellent with sending relief in the time of hunger. My God is excellent with sending relief in the time of poverty. My God is excellent with sending relief in the time of danger. Now, you with me here? I'm getting ready to close this in a minute. The God that I serve is excellent with sending relief in the time of weariness. That's the kind of God that we serve. God is excellent with sending relief, my brothers and sisters, in the time of illness. He is it 
anybody out there who ever been sick, amen, and though people came to pray for you, they came to the hospital to see you, hello somebody, they told you that, the, that prayer has been sent up for you, they leave your flowers at your bed, hello somebody, they bring balloons to you to try to cheer you up, are you with me, in the time of illness, are you with me here, but it's nothing, y'all better get, get with me, because I ain't been there, it's nothing, like relief when God comes into the presence when you're able to talk to God when you say God I don't know why I'm going through what I'm going through but I know you are able to bring me out is it anybody who ever been in that kind of situation have ever been sick you thought you wasn't going to make it sorrow filled the room grief filled the room hello somebody are you with me here Distress filled the room. Fear filled the room. But something on the inside told you that everything is going to be all right. And God began to receive, began to send a spirit of relief. Won't God do it? Oh, good God Almighty. My God is excellent with sending relief. In the time of attack. Yes, if you live long enough, the enemy will let you know he don't like you. If you live long enough, if you stay in the faith long enough, the enemy will let you know that he don't care for you. If you stay in the faith long enough, if you hold on long enough, the adversary will let you know uh, that you are not his friend. Do I have a witness here? And so he will begin to send attack from the right side. He will begin to send an attack from the left side. He will begin to let everybody that you thought loved you. He began to let everybody that you thought was on your side. Do I have a witness here? He began to allow your closest friends to get under your skin. He allowed family members huh, to stab you in your back huh, under attack because Satan don't care. The adversary don't care. He's trying to steal your joy. But I'm here to tell you that the God that we serve is able to send relief. Huh, huh, yes. Huh, at the time of attack. Well, I might as well close, Brother President. I might as well close. Uh, Brother Deacon Wallace, I might as well close, Ebony, because God has sent us relief. I will bend, but not break. That's what I made up in my mind. Let me wipe my face because I'm getting excited. Why are you getting excited, preacher? Why are you getting excited, man of God? Because it's something on the inside that told me you can bend but you don't have to break somebody hit the bishop and say bishop I can bend but I will not break do I have a witness here I'm going to wait for you hit me Valerie come on somebody hit me brother Butler come on Annie. come on Gwen y'all hit me and say I'm going to bend but not break Mama Ross hit me and say I'm going to bend but not break me, me. Sister Marshall, y'all hit me. Donnie and Jeannie, y'all hit me and say, I'm a bend, but not break. Because God promised me mercy and grace in the time of need. Ain't God all right? I will not break. Well, I got to get out of here in the time of trouble. I will not break. In the time of suffering, I made up in my mind that I will not break. I'm getting ready to get out of here, y'all. But I'm here to tell you this morning, in the time of shortage, something on the inside is saying, I will not break. In the time of pain, I will not break. Somebody hit the bishop and say, Bishop, I will 
not break. In the time of distress, I will not break. In the time of lies, when people lie on you, when they gossip about you, you got to say to yourself, you have to encourage yourself and say, I will not break. Ain't God all right? In the time of affliction, you got to tell yourself, I will not break. Ain't God good? In the time of grief, you got to tell yourself, I will not break. In the time of sadness, you have to tell yourself, I'm going to hang on to the word of God because I will not break. In the time of fear, you got to stand on the word of God and tell the adversary, as long as I got the word of God, I will not break. You got to tell him that God promised me. What did he promise you? I'm glad that you asked. He promised me that I would be with you always until the end of the ages. In the time of failure, I made up in my mind. I will not break. Is it anybody here can say, Bishop, I made up in my mind through the storm and through the rain that I will not break. What come may come, what go may go, but I will not break. What are you saying? I'm not going to throw in the towel. I won't quit. I won't give up. I won't, I won't, I won't give in. I won't give out because one of these old days, one of these old days, I wish I had my organ player here. I go in one of these old days. Good God of mine. I will be in, but I won't break. I will be in, but I won't break. And the reason why I won't break is because God is my manager. And he managed my soul. He managed my spirit. He managed my heart. He manages my mind to the point that I can't break. And if you want to get to that point that you will not break, doesn't matter what's going on around you, how people set traps for you, amen, and you won't break, how people try to destroy what God has built in you and you won't break, how people try to stop God's purpose that he's birthed in your heart and they don't even know they're trying to stop it and you won't break. Hello, somebody. You got to know God. You have to embrace Jesus Christ and God will show you all the enemies that are around you. Amen. All the enemies. But like Elijah, he just saw a cloud and that cloud looked like a hand. Hello, somebody. And when the vision came full effect, he saw all the chariots and the angels of God ready to go to battle with him. So you don't have to worry about your enemy. You can come boldly to the throne of grace, to find mercy, to help in the time of need. And I thank you for embracing Jesus as your personal savior. The only thing you have to do is ask Christ to come into your life. Mm. Things will not change that much on the outside, but you'll have a transformation on the inside. Because once you ask Jesus to come into your life by faith, the Holy Spirit will come into you and set up residence, hello somebody, and seal you until the day of redemption. So you don't have to worry about where your destiny will end up. That's what it's all about, is embracing Christ by faith. Whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I'm glad about it. Family, I thank you for standing with me. 
I thank you for supporting me. I thank you for praying for me. I thank you for supporting this ministry with your love offerings, with your, your tithes and offerings. Mostly, I thank you for standing with us in prayer. God loves you so much. But I, one thing I want to do, and one thing I want you to do, I want everybody to do this. This one thing I want you to do. Let me wipe my face. One thing I want you to do right now, I want you to put your hand by my hand. I'm going to pray for you. Okay? I want you to put your, put your hand. Amen. On your chat, you might have a hand there. So put that up. Put that hand up. Okay? I want everybody in the room. Everybody in the room. Mama, look around and make sure everybody in the room. Grandma, look around make sure everybody in the room. Husband, wife, look around make sure everybody in the room is ready to pray. Put their hand up. Put your hand up by faith. This by faith. Just put your hand up. Okay? And we're going to engage in prayer that God, amen, will let you bend but not break. Okay? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, so much stuff is around us. So many hindrances are around us. So many pitfalls are around us. So many people got knives in our back and we don't know it. Ah, Jesus, so many enemies are around us. So many haters that are hiding to get us. But God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every hand that is pointed toward my hand. That you bless them. That you comfort them right now. Ah, that you cover them with the precious blood of Jesus. I pray, God, right now that you anoint everything about them right now. You anoint every door in their residence. That anything that comes in evil, ah, have to run out and get out and be rebuked. In the name of Jesus. Any door uh, that brings in sadness and, and negativity. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke it right now. In the name of Jesus. God, I pray for every hand that you would begin to heal first spiritually. Heal them spiritually so they can hear from you. And then heal them emotionally so they would not be broken in fear. Heal them, my brothers and my God. Heal them uh, with their heart, with the heart, their heart, their mind, their soul. Heal all of that, God. That you may be able to amend it all together. So we thank you. So we celebrate who you are. God, I pray, I pray for their finance. That none of them would suffer a loss at all. Everyone would be able to pay their rent. They would be able to pay their mortgage. Everyone would have food on their table, God, in the name of Jesus. Everyone would be able to pay every bill, electricity bill, light bill, water bill, gas bill, insurance bill. God, Cardinal, I pray for that in the name of Jesus. Everyone that is pointing their hand toward me, I pray wealth in their life. I pray abundance in their life. And I thank you for it, God. We, we celebrate you for it, God. And we believe in it by faith because you said the just should live by faith. You said we walk by faith and not by sight. So everyone that have their hand pointed this way, I ask that you allow them to experience a divine and supernatural blessing. So we thank you. So we praise you. So we exalt you. Mm. So we glorify you. Thank you for this word, God. I will bend but not break. So cover us with your spirit, with your presence, so we are being and not break. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Come on, celebrate God. Come on, celebrate it. Come on, come on, celebrate God. Everybody, I want to see you. I want God looking at the chat. Come on, celebrate. Everybody celebrate God. Come on, give God. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Somebody just write, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Write me. Hit the bishop and say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, we love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, we love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, we glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, we glorify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, we lift you up, Jesus. Hallelujah, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Come on, hit me. Chat with me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We just magnify who you are, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. We thank each and every one of you. And maybe there are some of you that want to be a part of this, uh, this ministry. Okay. Uh, virtually, you can be a part of this ministry. While you're chatting with me, um, just hit your email and we'll get with you as soon as possible. 
This is our new spot. Share, invite. Amen. This is our new spot. Share and invite. Okay? And we will come to you with some brand new information. Okay? I want you to be a part. All right? Continue to give. Continue to give. Our tithes and our offering, okay, is, uh, should be prevalent. Okay? Don't forget to give. Don't forget to send your tithes. Okay? Send your tithes. It's going to appear on the on the screen right now. It's going to appear on the screen how you can give. And so we want to make sure that everyone, everyone give. All my deaconess, I'm looking for you to give. My doorkeepers, I'm looking for you to give, okay? My deacons, I'm looking for you to give. My praise team, looking for you to give. My kitchen ministry, I'm looking for you to give, okay? Church, I'm looking for you to give. My media ministry, okay? I'm looking for you to give. My armor bearers, I'm looking for you to give. My mothers, I'm looking for, I'm looking for everybody to start giving their offerings and their tithes, okay? Start giving. I'm looking for you to give. I'll be looking, okay? Usually I don't look, but I'm going to be looking for you to give, all right? And so I want to thank you and remember to follow the rules of engagement, all right? Protect yourself, all right? Guard your family, okay? Screen the people you are around, okay? Respect others' uh, uh, decisions, all right? Shelter as much as possible, okay? Uh, take uh, some vitamins, okay? And then uh, trust God to cover you, all right? That's the rules of engagement. I see, I love each and every one of you, okay? I see you, I talk to you later. Having a wonderful time. Uh, I guess I'm getting ready to go and get me a little something to eat. God bless you. I love y'all. I love you. Somebody say, I love you, Bishop. Go on. Hit me. Hit me with some love. Show me some love. Show me some love. Show me some love. <laughs> Show me some love. I'm sure you. I love each and every one of you, okay? I love y'all to death. And I'll talk to you later, okay? Holla. <laughs> Keep it real. Real talk. Your life has been. Your life has been. Out of control. Out of control. You're confused. No, I'm confused. But don't worry. Don't worry, you're so